Right, so day seven. I think it's day seven. Day seven update. Let me just turn this off. Been spending a lot of time in there today. All right, hang on. I'm gonna. I'm going back to bed, and I shall explain. Right, so didn't do an update yesterday. Wasn't well enough, and I pretty much. I was doing so well. The last video I did, where I was saying about how well I'd slept, doing absolutely fine, feeling great. Well, that didn't last. So yesterday I was absolutely exhausted having not very slept very well overnight and then last night a repeat of the same um, and very little energy, actually no energy at all. So I pretty much stayed in bed for most of the day. Now the problem that I've got, it's, I think it's mostly the diet related. There's a bit of a paradox here. I feel dreadful but I also feel better. It's kind of a shifting around of symptoms from really from some one thing to something else. So a little update on what on earth am I doing here as well? And um, why am I having this particular treatment? Three words for you. Mast cell activation. Mast cell activation. And there's a reason why I'm doing this because I'll, I'll explain what on earth I'm... That makes sense in a minute. So mast cell activation, you've got mast cells all through the body. They are basically the cells that release histamine when suitably triggered by something that creates a histamine response. You've got them everywhere in the body and you can each like hell come up in hives if they're triggered on the skin or if you have an allergic reaction to something. You also have them throughout the gut and these are, these are cells heavily involved in immune response. Now the cells in the gut can be triggered by certain food groups, particularly things like um, tinned fish, um, any preserved meat, any food high in nitrite, pretty much anything out of a tin, any processed food. And when you create mast cell activation in the gut, um, a number of things happen. The first thing that happens is you get an inflammation on the nerves, which increases sensitivity, um, creates bloating, and also paralyzes the gut. And this is one of the reasons why so many people who have been told that they have irritable bowel syndrome, whether it's the, the diarrhea version or the constipated version, um, may well actually have something else entirely. I mean, what is IBS anyway? It's probably one of those meaningless um, diagnostics. What it is, it's a, let me give you a diagnosis and get you out of my surgery quickly, please, young man. It's one of those diagnostics. So by having mast cell activation in the gut, basically you paralyze the gut, create sens sensitivity, create bloating, all the symptoms of IBS. So you can have the um, low histamine diet, which will help for some people. Basically eliminate all processed food, all preserved foods. Eat fish and meat, but only if it's really fresh. So that's, that's one of the key things. Now I, I chanced upon this when I was suffering from COVID. So, as you know, I got COVID in 2020, around about April, and then I was ill for about, so a huge, great bug. Let me just show you what's just, it's just arrived. How, how has he got in here? Right, there's my, um, I think, is that a stink bug? Is that what they're called? So I had, I had COVID. Um, now, what I, what I discovered there was that I'd had my gut issues relatively well managed. And I was aware that the reason I had the gut issue was predominantly because of a herpes infection in the spine. Everyone associates herpes, associates herpes with the genital, genital infection or oral. And the, so you get three types. Oral herpes one, herpes two, and then um, shingles, which is post chicken box. And largely that diagnostic occurs through infection site. But really it's not that simple. You can get any of the types of herpes anywhere on the body. It's one of those things that people just don't realize. So of all the places to get it, where does Andy get it? On his back. Now I've recognized there was a correlation between the gut problem and the outbreaks, which I was having persistently. And I've been taking now antivirals for a few years now, which have helped tremendously, especially with the outbreaks. The doctors told me that it was not possible. There was, there, there was no causal relationship between the two. Hmm, not convinced by that. I had IBS, here, have some antidepressants and basically fuck off. Wasn't convinced. Then I discovered whilst I had COVID that if I took diphenhydramine, that to you Americans is Benadryl and in the UK that's Nitol, all the symptoms went away. So I, that caught my, caught my attention. That's how I discovered about mast cell activation. 
What does herpes infection do when it affects the spine and gut? Mast cell activation. Oh, what does COVID do? Mast cell activation. Those three magic words. So, long story cut short, I'm already aware of the relationship between the cells in the gut and the fecal microbiota, the flora and fauna gut bacteria, good and bad and indifferent. And there's a very strong relationship between the two. So the theory is by fixing the way all the microbes in the gut work, food will be processed and digested differently, less, ma less mast cell activation occurring. So that is what I think I'm now experiencing. My intestines are magnificent, magnificent intestines. The difficulty I've got is overnight, the inability to sleep. Um, you know, if you, you've ever had that kind of feverish night sleep where you're never quite awake, but you're never quite asleep. Well, that's been me for the last two nights. And so I think that may well be a combination of the diet that I'm having, which is just awful here. I've got to be honest. Uh, the place that I'm staying in, because I'm the only person here, there's no, there's very little, there's no facilities, basically. There is breakfast served in the morning. I haven't bothered, it's just terrible. So I'm living off Lidl, which is directly opposite where I'm staying. Um, and Lidl's food here is quite limited. They don't do chicken here. I've noticed this, they, it's very hard to get anything that's basically not sausage, heavily preserved processed sausage. Um, so if I want protein, that's pretty much what I'm lim Oh, or tinned fish. The two foods that I really, I need to avoid. So I think it's a combination of both the diet that I'm having and mast cell activation as a result of that and um, low level infection. I'm absolutely, I probably don't look it, but I'm absolutely roasting. Um, and I've been like that for the last 48 hours. And I'm sure that's because of the bacteria that's being put into my body and the immune response that's occurring. So it's a mixed bag. Gut wise, despite the diet issue and of course low fiber issue, that's the other one. Um, things are tremendously improved. I can't even begin to, I'm so happy, I can't even tell you. Probably don't look here and don't really feel it that much at the moment. Um, but systemically, I think I need to go home, get back to a, a standard high fiber, much healthier diet than I've currently got. And um, once I've adapted to the bugs that have been put in, I think things will settle down. So that's the update for now. Um, sorry, it's a bit rambling. Um, two more implantations to go. I've got my PCR test first thing tomorrow morning. So hopefully they'll let me fly home on Saturday because I start the IMT training on Monday. I'll put a link in the description for those who want to join me for that. It's for people who've already done the practitioner. Doesn't matter who you did the practitioner with, but the advanced IMT with myself starts on Monday. Um, so may see some of you there. That's the end of this rambling update.